Okay, I have just one final massive coral to consider. Parides is, in many outer island drop-offs, um, the dominant coral, especially, say, between 20 and 30 meters. And it really builds the structure of the reef. But more and more of them are dying on Madro. In fact, there was only one colony in my study site, my table coral disease site, and that died just a few years ago. In this shot, you'll notice the pink spots, which represent an immune response of the coral. Sometimes can be associated with trematode, parasitic worm infections, but usually you don't see any pink, and um, there may be a number of disease syndromes affecting parietes. Um, haven't yet given these much attention. So, to sum up, oh yes, and we're even seeing the um, common lagoon sponges dying of disease. These sponges are probably several years old and are not yet rare. So, to sum up so far, to characterize the outer atolls, we have very healthy, unblemished looking coral. They're surrounded by abundant pink substrate made of coral and red algae. Very high coral diversity. You can see over 120 species on a single dive. Lack of any black slime or other aggressive smothering algae. Very few crown of thorn starfish. You maybe see just a few feeding scars on any given dive. The dominance of Isopora, Astriopora, Pavona, Montipora, Stylophora. The um, incidence of disease is extremely low. Now compare this to the Madro southern shore. Many corals are damaged, blemished, or diseased. Not much red coral and algae, but lots of gray substrate dominated by whisker algae and black slime. Very low coral diversity at some sites, lots of black slime and serious outbreak of smothering algae. A catastrophic crown of thorn plague beginning in 2003 and continuing at some sites. Nearly the complete loss of Isopora, Astriopora, most Pavona, um, many other brain corals are increasingly rare. Very high incidence of various coral and coral and algal diseases. And this is particularly hitting the young rec recruits. So this can lead to eventual ecosystem collapse. And that's just what happened at some places in Laura, the southwestern tip of Madro Atoll. This can be described as regime change, where a coral reef with between 75 and 100 percent of coral cover is replaced by an algal turf layer. The conditions for the recovery of this reef do not exist. You don't have coral and red algae. There's just no place for the coral to grow. You have some food for some fish, but there's just not much fish left. Here you see the fresh feeding scars from Cranothorn starfish eating the remaining live isopora. Also, you see disease killing the few remaining isopora colonies. So again, almost no coral, very few fish. Compare this to Rongelap. This is what a reef is meant to be.
And it's quite ironic that Ranglap was depopulated by a radioactive cloud of fallout that blew over from Bikini Atoll. Now we must consider the effects of our destabilized climate. Seawater temperatures are increasing. We're getting more and more bleaching, a phenomenon never seen prior to the 1970s. And fortunately, this bleaching on Madro is not killing too many corals and is restricted to the shallows for the most part. This reef in northern Madro Lagoon was completely killed, but this Acropora digitifera grows back fairly quickly. What I'm more concerned about are the ancient corals that live for hundreds of years. Now in this shallow lagoon site, the Parietes coral look very healthy. Some of the tops are killed by the low tide level. In 2006, some of this coral bleached and then recovered. But in 2009, when bleaching returned, some of the corals were not so lucky. 30% were severely bleached, 7% were completely bleached, and of this, a fraction did not recover. The following January, you can see um, by the yellow arrows, lesions of killed tissue, which appeared after the bleaching. Now let's take a look at this nearby coral. The red outlines show the part of the coral that died following bleaching. And notice that the protruding hemispherical regions outlined in white suffered no mortality at all. The dead coral tissue comes right up to the boundary, uh, indicating how um, heterogeneous a single colony can be. Certain patches of tissue are resistant to bleaching. And again, variation from colony to colony. Now another threat that the coral of Madro is facing is mining for the purpose of land reclamation. This is showing the suction dredge mining of a living reef. Nearly 100% coral cover, Parides rust, Parides cylindrica, some boulder corals, some table corals. And this FAA-funded project, complete with an environmental impact statement, which did not specify where the fill would come from. Um, local contractors were encouraged to invest in suction dredging, which would allow them to harvest sand in the lagoon without damaging coral. This corporation, our largest contractor named PII, chose to use their dredger to target a living reef. Here's the head of the suction dredger, and here's the damage halfway through their operation. Um, just destroying the entire reef. What is left now are sterile, sand-filled pits with no fish at all. Now my last coral image depicts a coincidental superficial resemblance between a very weird-looking parietes covered with tumor-like growth anomalies and these famous images of um, New Mexico atomic detonations. Now, the superficial resemblances are coincidental, but the fact is the reefs of Madro are perishing due to a human population bomb. The message these reefs are sending us is very clear. Coral and a Western-style human population simply do not mix. After 2,000 years of sustainable human occupation, uh, the recent overpopulation of the Marshall Islands, particularly Majuro, 
and Western-style overconsumption is destroy, destroying the makers and the sustainers of these islands. Now, the Marshall Islands became aware of how dangerous invisible radiation, radioactive isotopes, can be. And yet, we need also to be worried about CO2, dissolved nutrients floating in the ocean. Madro is a microcosm of the world. It is facing a serious dilemma, a dead end without viable alternatives. One can only hope that we'll be seeing a, a new list of priorities appearing from this crisis. Yet the fact is, very few in Madra are aware of the problems. Thousands of diapers litter the reefs. They're placed on shore every morning by overworked, under-resourced parents. We have an enormous and rapid depletion of local reef sharks. The fins are continued to be exported to Asia. Here's an Asian manager trying to block my attempts to record this facility. Solid waste is littering the shore, and no one stops to pick it up. It's just the water the kids swim in. This callous, thoughtless disregard for the plight of nature can be summed up in a single word, autistic. We humans seem to have forgotten our connection with nature, our dependency upon nature. And so for me, this poem by Mary Lou Awiaktika really speaks to me. Mother Nature sends a pink slip. Two homo sapiens, sorry for the misspelling, regarding termination. My business is producing life. The bottom line is you are not cost-effective workers. Over the millennia, I have repeatedly clarified my management goals and objectives. Your failure to comply is well documented. It stems from your inability to be a team player. You interact badly with co-workers, contaminate the workplace, sabotage the machinery, hold up production, consume profits. In short, you are a disloyal species. Within the last decade, I have given you three warnings. Made the workplace too hot for you. Shaken up your home office. Utilized plague to cut back personnel. Your failure to take appropriate action has locked these warnings into the phase-out mode, which will result in termination. No appeal. <laughs> 